everybody. Welcome live to the Gym Masters Show, live entertainment lifestyle celebrity talk show series. I'm your host, Jim Masters. We're here in the host chair, reporting for duty, as we always say. We're here in the New York area in the United States. We're going to have some fun with you. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show series, bringing back the Lost Art of Conversation with hundreds and hundreds of episodes, great guests from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, sports, all kinds of things. And it's amazing because the guests come from around the world, our viewers watch from around the world, and we always have a good time with all of you. I'm a professional broadcast host in television, radio, stage, and film. So you can see me professionally on TV, hear me on the radio. And that we started this show to connect with you and bring you into the fold here, the Lovety family, and uh, to connect with all of our fabulous guests. And boy, do we have a fabulous guest coming right now from right around the Seattle, Washington area. Xenia is here. She's a spectacular singer and songwriter. And so much more. She's an advocate. We're going to talk about that in just a second. She um, is very excited to be here, and we are very excited to have her here on the show as well. She might even sing for us. That's right. Keep your fingers crossed. She's a multiracial, dynamic artist, singer, songwriter, actor, activist. She uh, is weaving her diverse background into her music and advocacy. She's been Composing since she was 10, playing by ear, creating music for all phases of life, from composing her first self-produced published album as a teen to headlining events for important causes. She has captivated audiences, influenced by 50s through 70s music, and grounded in authentic principles. Xenia's music reflects her commitment to conscious and integrity. Driven by a passion for authentic change and self-growth, Xenia uses her platform to amplify marginalized voices and support underprivileged communities. She's a survivor herself of severe trauma, as well as an agonizing genetic condition and dyslexic as well, which fuels her creativity. It's an extraordinary story. And we're so honored to have an opportunity to share it with all of you here on the show. Again, she's got such a beautiful voice. She's such an extraordinary talent. And we love the fact that she is here with us on the show and she's going to share a lot of things with us about her experience, about her life, about her music, about her advocacy and everything else that she does, which I think is amazing. You know, one of the other things too, is that her life experiences are filled with stories, wisdom, and realizations, which translate into her art. She's also vice president of Heartful. I love that. Heartful, that's F-U-L-L, Heartful World Foundation and advocates for accessible meditation, yoga, and safe environments. She's certified in yoga, meditation, lifestyle, and wellness. She promotes holistic well-being as well as through her family business, Alive and Shine. Her parents are well-known in the holistic wellness world, and she follows in their footsteps. She's also a digital artist, web designer for over a decade. Xenia, an alumni of Second City's esteemed conservatory program, that infuses her performances with the improvisational wit and comedic flair that she has cultivated during her time at Second City, the renowned institution as well. How cool is that? Xenia also models to represent natural bodies and people with life-altering genetic conditions. She's based in Seattle and Los Angeles, but as a girl who traveled the world since childhood, she follows wherever her passion for art leads, and she welcomes others to join her in fostering love and authenticity through her profound impact of music and influence. And, you know, we talk about that a lot here on the Gym Masters Show Live series. Positivity, inspiration, being good to one another, taking care of one another, and taking care of yourself as well. So we've got some inspiration, positivity, which our world really needs about now. And uh, maybe even a tune we might hear as well. Hey, everybody, welcome. If you want to comment when the show is on live, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and comment in the Lovety Hall chat room, which is busy and active right now with viewers saying hello to one another and commenting. And uh, yeah, I think it's time to start the show. We are very, very happy to have her here coming to us from the greater Seattle, Washington area. Beautiful place. I just happened to be there maybe about a month or so ago. And that was my first time in Seattle, Pacific Northwest. Loved it. We'll have to be back. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hi. Friend? I'm alive. You are live I and alive, alive, right? Live and alive, yes. <laughs> Just a little action going there at the uh, home base, right? 
<laughs> a little, uh, you know, pipe leak, but we will survive. <laughs> That's it. That's it. As long as it's, we're not coming live from Niagara Falls, we're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> a few minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, there's a few minutes ago. Yeah, just a slight uh, plumbing leak there, folks. But she's a yeah. trooper. She is here because she wants to uh, share with all of us. And, and welcome to the show. Really a beautiful thing to have you here. I love what you do. I love what your passion is and your mission. Um, as a, you're a singer, songwriter, and so much more, you're, you're really a poet as well. But I really love the fact that you take all of your own personal authentic experiences and in a very holistic, open, and loving way, share them with others. And you do it through your art and your music and everything that you do. Tell us a little bit about early on what really inspired you to want to not only get into the arts and, and to entertainment, but also to share your story, which, as I mentioned in the introduction, your story, you know, like anybody's, has ups and downs and things that happen to us in our life. Tell us about that. Oh, my. Well, um, I would say my inspiration is definitely my mother. She, she went through an enormous amount of, um, at a, a very young age, her, uh, her parents died in a plane crash, um, in 1978 when she was 16 years old. And then her sister was murdered shortly after her best friend died of AIDS. Her cousin committed suicide. I mean, she had everything you could possibly imagine, um, happen in a very, before, before her early twenties. And, she raised me on um, integrity, authenticity, conscience, um, all the the mentalities and and heart heartful. That was that's her creation, actually, Heartful World Foundation. And she helped me to find, you know, my heart and ways to um, express myself and. And she actually introduced me to the genre of fifties, uh, forties, fifties, sixties, and seventies music, and that is what um, really fueled my love. And even just uh, you know, TV shows and everything. She just she, she's the reason that I have all this education about those eras because usually people my age don't know that much about those eras. And when I was a kid, I was like. You know who's what? Who's Three Dog Night? I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I'm just like, they're my favorite band. <laughs> like this little, <laughs> like I think everyone. Joy knows. to the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And oh my gosh, and um, and Journey and all these people. And so, but she's her, starting to really appreciate that music, huh? In that time yeah, period. Yeah. That was. I mean, to me, that was it's, a very big a era. Seventy. Oh, yeah, soul was, music, disco. I mean, you had yeah. really everything with real you instruments. Had a diverse. And, you Very had diverse. diverse and really, I mean, you had, you know, Neil Diamond and Joan Baez. You had people who were like songwriters. They were yes. truly um, creating stories and creating beautiful, you know, meter. And it was just such a, to me, it was a beautiful age for music. And so that's a huge part to answer your question of my inspiration. And the Bee Gees and too. Oh, the Bee Gees, yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, I could talk about those yeah. eras all day, and even you know um, Dean Martin. I mean, I was I was listening oh, to everybody. Yeah. I was yeah. listening to to everybody, and um, and even just you know TV shows and everything was from that era. So even when I went to Second City, it was based on these classic comedians or these classic artists and these classic. Um, everything and uh so that fueled a lot of my my inspiration i would what say. did the comedic part like i'm in second city is renowned everybody knows second city and there's so many incredible people comedians comedians yeah. who come from second city and they've become major stars movies talk shows all kinds of cool things um what was the interest with Second City, and uh, when did you people realize you had this comedic timing and talent, and you had the interests in comedy? 
I mean, I was the goofball in every scenario. <laughs> I mean, I was always using comedy for everything. I was kind of tears of a clown, though, like uh, very yeah. sarcastic, using, you know, comedy to get through trauma. So, you know, when people are like, oh, how are you smiling when you're talking about your trauma? That's how I cope. <laughs> that's that's my way, yeah, you know. Some right. people process differently. So for me, comedy was my way of processing things and, and um, the traumas I had personally been through. And so uh, I went to Second City, actually, because I was obsessed with the show, um, Whose Line Is It Anyway? <laughs> oh, yeah, Wayne Which, Brady. And uh, yes. From the beginning, like the like all through. And I do also like you know, European comedy. But Do you love oh improv gosh. and things of that nature? I love, yeah. I love all of that. And for me, Ryan Stiles and Colin Mockery were just my favorite. And then I found out that they went to Second City. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go there. I also studied a little bit at UCB um, and Groundlings. But Second City, I went through the whole program. And you actually have to, after a few of the things like improv one, two, three, you have to audition in order to go to the next level, which is conservatory. Mm. And so it's a, it's a dedicated, long process. And what were you hoping? What was your mission? What were you hoping was going to come out of it? Did you want to be a comedian? Was oh, that yeah, or an I actress in a yeah. situation comedy or all the above? All, all the above. I I mean, I loved it. We did so many performances and I've done some, you know, films and things and things like that. Um, but I what I really wanted out of improv was the ability to really know how to on set, oh, if we need some something quick. And I was already kind of that type of person where I'm very in the moment live comedy, but uh, it really teaches you how to facilitate that and, and nurture it. And it was a really, really phenomenal training. Hmm, phenomenal. Now, yeah. where did you take that going forward? Were you able to do performances where comedy was called for? Were you on stages? Any of that happened for you? We yes, we had a, a long running stage show at uh, Second City's um, uh, location for a while. We actually went longer than what was supposed to be because we got really good results. It was a hilarious show, and um, basically the problem was that right around that time, just a little bit later, the pandemic hit, <laughs> and so jobs and things of that nature kind of became a little bit hard to scarce yeah yeah non-existent so like, yeah right so I'm like what a wonderful time for this to all happen and I was also going through a bit of a traumatic situation while I was in Second City which no one had a clue about because I was just putting on a face and let's go you know when you're in you're in even like today had a little disaster and here we are and there <laughs> you know you, you kind of yeah. have to like life you life life to. life so, you know, um, but it was the pandemic threw things off a lot. And then, of yeah. course, personal things. But the pandemic oh. was a biggie. <sighs> well, it still is to it's a degree. Not, yeah. It is. You know, it's, I'm still know people are getting unwell, unfortunately. And there's a lot of things tough. that have changed. It's different, isn't it? It, it feels the environment. The days feel different. Yeah. Not as does. joyful, not as happy. Mm. Everybody's no. stressed, worried, angry, frustrated. Oh. No, nobody listens to each other and everybody's divisive and, and oh. you know, oh. it's just like and everybody's pushing, shoving. And when you drive on the mm -hmm. road, and I mentioned this a lot because I'm on the road a lot. The oh, amount my of goodness. people that are speeding, cutting each other off. I mean, every single car exactly. is speeding. And when I say speeding, it, the speed limit could be 65. They're going 85, mm -hmm. 90. And and it, and I'm talking about a guy in his Cadillac with the left blinker still stuck for two hours, who's 89 years old, and even he's speeding. You used oh, to rely 100%. on that guy not to speed, and 100%. now that guy's speeding. Everybody's so ramped up, and they're taking chances with the cars, cutting you off, tailgating, road raging. What the? Mm. And it's worse now. Have you noticed all that? Oh, oh my gosh! The worst part was, I mean, LA is pretty much like that in general. So driving in LA, you kind of, you just get used to that. I mean, I literally had someone throw a drink at my car while we're on the free day, freeway. Like, I don't even know. It was a smoothie, I think. And it, they just threw it. I don't know why, but what it hit flavor? my window. I think it was mango. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> I actually do know because I had yeah, to clean it taste, up. taste, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> I had to mango, actually clean it up. Mango, sticky. Yeah. So I've been, I mean, I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. So, but Washington. 
we were known as the best drivers. Everyone is crazy. We, we actually had an ad that I didn't know about. Someone told me there was an ad and showed it to me that <laughs> there, we're so polite as Washingtonians that it was just two cars. Oh, no, you go first. No, no, you. No, no, you. No, 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 no. Now they probably smash into each other. Like there is no, I've never seen the driving is absurd. The behavior of people in general is absurd. I've, I thought Washington was like, you know, a safe haven. That's even become crazy. I mean, the car crashes I see, I never used to see them. Now it's yeah. all the time. Yeah. I mean, for me, LA was just, that's kind of how LA is. Part just of crazy the scene there, car so chases. I was trained. And, yeah. yeah, I feel like I was trained by, <laughs> by being in LA to then come here and then be prepared for this. I don't think I would have been prepared. And I don't understand why. I just, I mean, I don't know why people are just raging and, and losing it. Um, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's true, but I, I say that too, because I didn't, not that I'm any better, but I didn't during it. And we've had loss. There's been things that have happened that, you know, it, that pandemic has affected all of us, but I'm not out yelling at people and cursing them out and honking the horn and pushing and shoving in the stores and blaming everybody else for what's gone on. I'm like, this has happened and it's happened to all of us. What can we do about it? We have to come mm -hmm. together. We have to get through it together and we can help each other, inspire each other. I know. So I know. I think it seems like you're, you're in a rowboat and you're yeah. you know, rowing in the other direction of the way. And the, the pandemic kind of did that. The pandemic yeah. kind of did that though. It made us feel like we were alone. And I think that was a, a, a mindset even I wasn't uh, prepared for where I'm, I am kind of an introvert, but also an extrovert. I don't know what to call that, but I understand being alone, but there is a phrase a, for that. It's an extroverted, extroverted. introvert. So Aha, when you right. need to be extroverted <laughs> on stage in a studio out in public, you can mm. turn the juice on and be extroverted, but you need maybe like the next day to come down from that, recuperate, right, exactly. unplug, not answer the phone, and just yeah. breathe, and then that charges you up to go back out and be extroverted again. Exactly. Yep, that's the one. That's the guy. That's me. <laughs> extroverted. I a lot of people am. in these industries are. A lot of people, they're, I think they're introverted, and then the lights, camera, action bring them out. Um, you know, allows them to rise and shine, which I think yeah, is- Yeah, literally, literally. Rise literally. and shine. Now, you've yeah. been such an advocate for all things positive and beautiful. Tell us about, we'll talk more about the singing and songwriting, things of that nature, but talk about your important advocacy work and the things that you believe in that you really focus on and celebrate. I think that's a beautiful part of what you do. Oh, goodness. Um, well, for me, music and songwriting was my way of dealing with emotions. So I either I'd hear it or I would create it. So I started songwriting when I was about 10 years old and composed a bunch of songs around that age. And I was taught piano for a small period of time, but for fundamental uh, eras when I was about 10, that's how I was able to compose by um, the Forrest Kinney method. And he was actually a dear friend of my father's and he used to teach um, the Bill Gates kids and, and all. He was just, he was, a, he was a phenomenal and it was from the Franz Liszt lineage. And he was amazing, but the way he taught was improvisationally. So for for the way that him and um, Ikiko, who was one of my main teachers, they taught how to create. And eventually it was about reading music. And at that age, I just didn't, I didn't, I was dyslexic, <laughs> which I didn't totally understand fully at that time because I don't know why, but at that time it wasn't really talked about. I don't was think it, it discovered even early now. when you were a kid in school? They didn't really discover they, that. Yet, huh? They gave me different labels because dyslexia wasn't on that list. That so they gave evolved, me, right? Right. So they didn't put that wasn't really that wasn't really the on the list. And I'm not that old. So this is, I mean, the, the, this whole thing of different types of um, learning abilities are pretty new, you know, yeah. even though dyslexia has been known for a long time, right. there's different types and different, no, no, That's no. Right. And so they want to put me in this category. And so for me, reading was not my favorite as, 
you know, that's pretty known for dyslexics. But I, I love to learn and I love to create. So for me, writing, I would, I did do college for a little bit and writing, I got A's and A's and A's and A's. And reading, I did well as well, but they're like, how are you not reading anything and still can write and write and write? And I'm like, well, somehow, I don't know. <laughs> I, I love to, I love to write. Anyway, so I was just um, going through that and composing. Um, <laughs> we have the fixer uppers. Um, and basically, Oh, I thought they were I, your backup singers preparing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> They're all ready to like, go. Soon you're going to hear a guitar you know, being plucked. And water. <laughs> that's my next song, Water. Bridge uh, Over Troubled there? Water. Bridge <laughs> Over Troubled Water. Yeah, that's the, that's the one <laughs> at this point. Talk about 70s and 60s. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Both gosh. Oh, I know. I mean, that is a great song. Yes, those are. She I means it literally, folks. <laughs> oh, oh, my days. Um, basically, so anyway, I, uh, started composing around that time. She, my teacher was like, well, let's get on to, uh, reading music. And I couldn't, I just, it really just all flipped around for me and she was frustrated mm -hmm. and that makes sense. She doesn't, she didn't understand. I have no, you know, I understand that. So I stopped, I was maybe 13 or 14, I think. And I continued more with, with Forrest and we, it was more about composing and creating. And then I stopped that as well. But then I released my album when I was uh, uh, 14, 15. That's so, unbelievable, isn't but it? It was through my, my home. album when I was 14. <laughs> yeah, wow. it was at home. And yeah. it's a little bit more, you know, all ages type of thing. It's, it's, I wrote it in the anticipation that all ages could hear it. Which is um, great. And my niece was just born. And so I was like, oh, what can she also listen to? Because music at that time was very, the lyrics were not quite what, it was a different time. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, what could she also listen to? What could everyone listen to? So I wrote that. And um, I think it's, it's a several songs are on there. And then, uh, then I've released two singles. And then I live streamed for a long time, which is why this is not that scary for me yeah. um but i live streamed during the pandemic so after the pandemic happened and i was like what do i do i was stuck you know ever as everyone was mm -hmm. and i started doing live streaming um for singing and comedy and uh, um and and i blew up on there and i really was very successful and so then that's when the music was like oh things are picking up and then <laughs> the, back, um, the backup singers are going out. The musicians have, are going to get the snare drums <laughs> and the have, saxophones. Those, those are actually plumbers. She had a leak on the other side of the house and the, she's got the crew coming in and out. So, you know, they're being very quiet. They're, they're being they're, really they're, they're tiptoeing. You know, they didn't expect when they were going to come for the service call, this they would guy. be live on the air. I know. Like this <laughs> Joe, Joe and like... uh, this this uh, episode of the Jim Masters show is sponsored by uh, Joe and Bob's Plumbing of Plumbing. Seattle. <laughs> there are plumbers everywhere. That's oh, right. my goodness. Where their cup it's... runneth over. <laughs> how do you know it's live? Well, uh, that's how. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Kind of that makes is it out. Can't doubt. I know. I don't yeah. think all this water. I've been seeing so much water leaking everywhere, and I haven't been, you know, having it. I need to replenish. Yeah. So the singing uh, part started coming. But when you were a kid, were you always singing too around the house? Were you? Oh always... yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But my my mom had, you know, as I said, all the fifties, forties, and sixties and seventies music. And how can you not sing to those songs? I mean, they're so catchy and so good, and so. Um, I was constantly singing, I was dancing, and music was just in in my veins, I think. And I later on in life found out that my grandmother, so my mother's mother, who was Italian, who had red hair and blue eyes, hmm, that skipped. <laughs> um, she <laughs> that skipped, yeah. She was um, very musical. I found out, and she was the one that died in the plane crash, and so I never met her. But she. She was extremely musical. She was um, a pianist and a um, and a cellist. 
Um, but they were very, very, very poor. So they couldn't afford a piano. They couldn't afford a cello. So it was just whenever she got the chance to do it, then, you know. Um, so I was, oh, okay, there's some genetic component. I didn't know that until later. Oh, wow, there's some genetic component. That's cool. Um, and she was actually a teacher in Berkeley University for um, learning disabilities. <laughs> Can you believe yeah, it? She had amazing. dyslexia. She was dyslexic. Yeah, d dyslexic, it um, is also Runs in the genetic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Genetic. Right. So that was interesting. And she was getting her doctorate in um, uh, learning disabilities. So she was a major advocate. She used to teach underprivileged children how to, you know, learn and, you know, basically the rejects of uh, the world that would just, no, forget about them. She would get them to go through college and get them to learn because they had just learning differences. You know what I mean? It's, and they would um, be shunned and put aside and yeah. so, as opposed to included, right? Exactly. And so that was her life's work. And she was just a week away from her doctorate when she died. Mm. She had submitted it. You know, she would have gotten it. She just, it was just... Yeah, so she has a beautiful doctorate that um, thesis that I have to find that just describes it's like this thick that has, describes all you know how learning disabilities and dyslexic at a time when you know that was not at all talked about. As you discover more about her, um, do you see a lot of her in you? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, I'm very much like my mom, <laughs> so. Um, I see some similar similarities, absolutely, um, and that she passion sounds like a go-getter and a passionate yeah. person, it's right? Kind right. that would go to like you know the government headquarters and say we need this now, and she was such a go-getter, and I mean a pioneer in a time when that was you know clearly um, not a normal thing especially but, with um, women too they weren't allowed to really even speak up and voice right exactly we've come a long way fortunately with that yes we have come a long way but we're also still work to be done still, still yeah there's still a lot of you know things that are not where they should be <laughs> at least in my opinion um so yeah <laughs> i mean first album at 14 that's so very very cool and then what happened like from there, did that part of your career start to really develop? Because you have, you know, there's the acting, there's the singing, songwriting, and then this advocacy that is so important. Um, you co-founded uh, that wonderful organization, uh, Heartful World Foundation, which I think is something very, very special. And I love that it's heartful, like having a full heart. Yeah. Tell us about that. That's amazing. That's a beautiful that's, thing. Yeah, that's mostly my mother. She created Heartful, and it's a it's med, Heartful Meditation, Heartful Lifestyle, um, and uh, that sort of thing. And um, she's she. It's all about things to get you to live from your heart, and all the things that are holistic and how to through how she also got through all of her what she went through because as I told you earlier that's a lot to go through at such a young age and so she was creating you know that sort of thing and then we created Heartful World uh, Foundation to help others but in a way you know nonprofits can do a lot more in a lot of ways and so that's why we we founded it and so we uh, share meditation and lifestyle and and things of that nature um, um, so it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing nonprofit. Um, yeah. What, we, the, we what would you lot. say is the ultimate goal and mission for it? The hope that, uh, what you hope people to get out of it and from it? Um, our hope for Heartful World Foundation is to help underprivileged, help people in general to, um, find their heart to live from their heart. We also teach in um, prisons and places like that um, and so forth. And yes, heartfulworld.org. Um, and so it's, it's a place to help people live from their heart. And we, we uh, do drives to um, for underprivileged and also victims of domestic violence and, things of that nature. Um, 
it's it's just a one-stop shop because we found when we wanted to donate to nonprofits and when we wanted to help in certain things before this was founded, we noticed a lot of the money goes to the CEOs and a lot of money goes to, I mean, we're going to be real. It doesn't always go to where they say it's going to go. The I'm just going to, yeah. I'm just, I mean, if, True, they've, they've investigated those things and it's right. quite surprising that a lot of the, not all, but there are a bunch where yeah. more goes to administration than it does to the groundwork and the people on the front lines who are yeah. uh, the people in need. Exactly. And so when we saw that and we noticed and we looked it up and found out, wow, it's not, I mean, of course, you know, see, I guess they have to get something, but it was like millions and millions. And I was yeah. like, well, that doesn't really resonate with what we want to do. We want to make sure it goes to what the cause is. Right. You know, so that was the, that was the conundrum. And that's what, you know, when you have a problem, you find a solution kind that's of right. thing. And that's yeah. kind of how this all came to be. Um, yeah. So I'm like dealing with these people coming. You know, I love the microphone. It looks like a big, like, you know, strawberry <laughs> ice cream cone or something. Yeah. <laughs> um. It is. It is. I actually had this same one, but it was it was a gray, dark color, and uh, I used that actually for about, gosh, ten years or something. Nothing ever happened. Um, and uh, then I was just like, well, you know, if I'm gonna do talks and stuff, let's just have fun, <laughs> even though it does look like an ice cream. What are projects <laughs> that you're working on now in terms of? Uh the singing and songwriting and, and tell us about the songwriting part of what you do too. Yeah, I, uh, I have a song coming out. I actually have a bunch. So I'm, <laughs> it's kind of strange. So right around that time I was doing very well in live streaming, like I was mentioning, I unfortunately um, got extremely sick. So 2022, 23. So you ended up I getting uh, got, the big I, C. I didn't actually, I actually got a really, so I've had this kind of chronic issue for a long time and I didn't really realize how serious it was because I was kind of hiding it. Yeah. And, you know, just like if anything came up, put a little makeup on it or whatever, yeah. you know, I just yeah. was like, oh, I don't want to make and it. get out there and keep going, right? Don't want to make a big deal out of it. And so it really, after some certain traumatic things I went through, it really showed up. It had a, you know, stress is a huge part of our health. As we know, mental health is physical health. And so when that happened, um, I was in bed and resting and recovering all through 2023. And so all my plans, what I wanted to release and everything I wanted to do completely went a halt. I had to stop doing live streams. I was, you know, I had 500,000 followers on there. It was a pretty big deal. And I mean, still do this there. But uh, it's, it's be sure and share pause. this episode link on that. Page. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Takes I mean, there's a village. A lot. Yes. Oh, it does. It does. Yeah, Absolutely. It, really does. it does. And I had to pause that for a while because I ended up having to go to the ER mm. and it was the whole, it was a risk of sepsis and, um, which so, is not, you can't play around with that. My cousin yes. has that and she's okay, but that's, that could be, you know, make or break. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get yeah. through that? How, how, you know, part of your story is a fabulous performer and entertainer and, and comedian and singer songwriter and all an advocate is your ability, which again, can be very inspiring for those who are going through something, you know, here you are and you, you know, you have this great following and you're very talented and you're in the limelight yet you've gone through things in your own life and you're very open and authentic about sharing that. How have you, for anybody watching who may be going through something and they feel scared and stuck and frustrated what are some of the ways you've been able to work through it all like you said you i mentioned that your parents are very well known in the holistic you know wellness world that's a great advantage and help and, and foundation but what are some of the things you did to get through the trauma and just get through the craziness of of things that happened in your life music <laughs> Um, music is the very the main healing. Guy. Yes, <laughs> music, music and comedy guy. are music very comedy. healing. Universal they language. Yeah, they they're very very healing. So either you know, 
listening to it, um, but mostly composing. So in that pause of time when I was very unwell, I wrote a lot because there was um, so much time <laughs> and I was just lying there. So I was writing a lot. And, and at, you know, at this point, I, I've basically written, oh my goodness, um, I calculated it the other day, over 300 songs. So in that, I mean, it's a lot and full songs. I don't mean just like, oh, you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah. I, you know, all that's yeah. ready to go. But and then I was thing. like, okay, now I have to produce them because when you're lying there and you're writing and writing and writing, you can't produce them. So you just keep writing. So I kept writing. I didn't stop writing. And so now I do have a song coming out soon. And so, because, you know, I was very unwell. So that was the reason. And, um, but it made me aware because I finally got, um, told what this could probably be um it's an, a genetic <laughs> situation um because i was thinking like why can't i solve this because i've solved a lot of health issues my goodness i tell you and this was not this was one thing that was not going away it was chronic, and yeah. then i found out oh guess what this is, <laughs> this is a genetic chronic um inflammatory issue and two issues um and one is a very severe hypermobility issue as well and so you know my you bones would pop out and can't get around and oh no well that's yeah i mean for the other first one the inflammatory issue like you can't move when you have a flare i mean it's horrendous it's so beyond it painful must you must have uh sort of connected or chimed in with or, or understood empathized with celine dion with what she's gone through as well as not being able mm -hmm. to sometimes she's got that, that uh, stiff syndrome where sometimes yes, she can't does. even move, yeah. can't vocalize brilliant, yeah. incredible voice, beautiful individual, but they can't move and, and how that can totally oh. uproot your entire life, you know? Yeah. Oh, completely. And that was what was so sad because people are like, oh, she must be a flake or, oh, she, you know, this and this. And I, you know, I'm sure even anyone with chronic illness would know that it's so hard to explain. <laughs> it's very hard to explain. Oh, I'm just having a flare. How do I explain that? I mean, do I have to send you pictures? I really don't because it's gross. So what, <laughs> you know, what do I say? What do I do? And then eventually, you know, I had to own the fact that those things were happening. Like Celine, I'm so glad that she's, you know, getting, hopefully she's getting better, but also, um, it's yes. Music company can be so. Chris Gorman watching. Yes. Hey, Chris. Yeah, so true. So true. It's so it is what's healed me in absolutely every way. Um, between that and what my mother has taught me, it's been it's music is so healing and of course comedy. I mean, to me, the greatest comedians of our time are the ones that were going through it. <laughs> like Who if you some think of, your of the, favorites? you know, oh goodness. I mean, Robin Williams. Of course, we all love Harvey Corman. And Harvey Corman, of course. I mean, well, I grew up with um obviously Carol Burnett show. Carol Burnett and, and Carol Conway. Burnett show, Tim Conway and I love Harvey Lucy. Corman were my favorite duo, still are my favorite duo in the history of the existence. If I want to laugh, I you know I can show. when I see both of them together. If I see both of them together, it's over for me. And when you I'm, have Tim I'm Conway crying. and Harvey together, it, oh, I'm it's crying. Just it's the most disgusting. comedy gold <laughs> oh. and relatively unscripted. But Tim would go off the cuff that it, ex mm -hmm. and and wasn't necessarily planned, and didn't. And not everybody loved exactly. it, you know, the behind the scenes. Yet yeah. it's the best stuff. I know. Well, that's the and thing Harvey's about Harvey's reactions yeah. too, and he really oh. seriously, as a classically trained actor, you'd see Harvey Corman, which was he made it even funnier, trying not to laugh. Yeah. And just, yeah. Pff, 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 you know? yeah. And I then mean, all of a sudden, he would just completely laugh, and then we would all laugh. We would just it's the best. Uh, that's what I love about improv, though. That's why also Tim Conway and Harvey were both. Uh, huge parts of what I loved about comedy as well. And also like, you know, Harvey would, would add his flair to something and, and it was, it's just, it was, it was beautiful. It was, it was like a, a dance. Um, um, it was, um, it was amazing. And I, I just love, I love, <laughs> I love that. <it. laughs> Chris Corman, uh, Harvey Corman's 
son is in here. He is a joy, a wonderful person. He's Isn't the reason he? I'm even here. He's I will amazing. 100% thank you to him because he's been but just such so a clarify, kind person. He's not the father. No. <laughs> he's the reason she's here, but not that reason she's no, here. No, no, no. The, the, the reason that I am here is. make an announcement. Chris Corman is the reason why Xenia is, is in the rectangle. This, I'm in this rectangle. See, see there's always humor in everything, right? Exactly. There's you know, always humor in everything. This ain't bad. <laughs> see, he's the reason why she's here now. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Which could also mean another thing too, but yeah. True. Yeah. I know. We could really do a whole but, skin on it. Yeah, uh, just we start it. It's improv now. It's the best. Um, but yeah, he, he he's he's such a gemstone. And in fact, he we would chat and he'd tell me all these wonderful things about comedy, and I'd be like, oh, this is what I loved, you know, and how wonderful of a, a man his father was. Um so um yeah, so it's it's been it's I'm so grateful for um for you know Chris he's been so helpful and facilitating so much such what a comes, wonderful person absolutely right what comes first for you is it the vocalization is it singing and songwriting is it the comedy what in your heart yeah. what comes first for you um definitely equal? definitely both um uh Sorry, they're asking me something about the thing. Oh, the plumbers are texting yeah. you while you're up I know. I'm like, oh. you, you can you can just the room. I no no no. It's fine. the pipe is under the cabinet sink. It's, it's the pipe. Right, it's, is the, it's the it's the thing that's that's you know, dripping the that's the water. Sort of leaking. It's the thing with the, there's a is. bowl under it, you know, and it's just kind of. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, okay. She'll um, get you the wrench in a minute. <laughs> I'll get the wrench. Be right back. Um, oh my gosh, I totally forgot what we were talking about. Well, you were talking about the love of singing, songwriting, comedy, oh, yeah. and if it's all equal. And this is great. Oh, this whole thing is like comedy. She, if you're, if you're just tuning in, folks, she really Send. does have Send help. a mini flood happening. And there are plumbers who've showed up who are on the, they're very quiet. You know, you don't hear any. They're pretty yet. good. You don't hear banging and all kinds of, you know, jackhammers like going on. I they're going like this. Through. <laughs> it's like, like if we keep doing this, we'll be like, here till midnight doing tape. this. <laughs> we just want to go bang. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, we've gone through like, I mean, don't even know how many towels. Um, so we have no towels in the house now. No towels. Um, no towels. Um, to, for me, definitely both are. I was actually talking to Chris about this. For me, both music and uh, comedy and acting and and whatnot are both incredibly. They're, they're art. You know, so when you have one art, it's it's all kind of becomes one. Um, so for me, that's a huge them thing. Um, so I honestly think they're both incredibly important um, they really and go are. together. They both go together. And I, I love music. And I, I think they're both, you know, they went hand in hand for me because I also, you know, grew up on, uh, you know, the Carol Burnett show where it was hand in hand. I mean, every Carol Burnett show came with some music. And yes. so for me, you know, I always kind of associated them as the same thing. You know, they're, they're, they're all, it's all writing. It's all creating. It's all creativity. It's all, you know, expression. It's all emotional expression. It's all, it's all the same source. And so it wasn't like, oh, they're two different things. They're they're kind of, you know, to me at least, they're they're hand in hand. They really are. I think, you know, and art is art. <laughs> what would you say to this young lady? What would you say to her now? Oh. <laughs> How'd you find that? Oh, How'd I do you my research. Find that? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Hey, here. Oh. What would you say to her? now with all the wisdom and experience uh, life lived and the things you you know uh, oh my goodness life lived. what would you say to her oh my goodness it would be a book um yeah. it would be a whole book uh i would say don't don't trust everyone mm -hmm. you know be discern uh mm, Ah, uh, it's, you know, it, <laughs> that would honestly, the biggest thing would be trust yourself, listen to yourself. It's pretty much the classic things, you know, mm -hmm. listen to yourself and listen, listen to, to your, your heart, heart, you know, and 
Um, you, did you love my little unibrow there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. I, have, I actually do have a unibrow. Uh, it's like a very teeny little little V of unibrow, which shows my my character. Indian, my it, Indian background. It is character, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, it's. Some fun. people have a mole. Some people that, have. And me, know. I don't have it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I would I would t tell her, you know, um, basically it's it's going to be okay, but don't give your trust without testing and making sure people are worthy of your trust and your time and um and yeah, don't love all right don't love too hard honestly for the wrong people Did you know you it's i absolutely do that i am a massive i trust oh golly when i love i love and i trust when i trust i trust you know i give my all and my hundred percent and I would say, you know, give definitely test the waters before diving into the pool. <laughs> you know, that that is a huge thing I learned. And, you know, as a survivor of some pretty crazy stuff, um, definitely that that is the, a very big, important thing. It's made you stronger, right? And through living through some of these things. Um, kind of. <laughs> I would say, you know, the whole thing, progress, the, right? the thing about, you know, they say, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Ugh, I don't, I don't know. I, I totally got stronger, to be honest. I definitely got more ability to, to see different parts of myself and see where I need to grow and things I need to let go of. But I don't think I necessarily got stronger because of the trauma I went through because it kind of gives the the trauma the like thank you trauma no no I definitely it was those experiences help you to learn about yourself more mm -hmm. but there's other ways to learn about yourself where you don't have to go through you know hell and back <laughs> necessarily We're exactly and right. that's that's kind of what my mom tries to teach about you know the importance of um going into your heart and finding yourself before so that you don't have to go through you know right so finding much self-awareness <laughs> right exactly yeah. being and being able to self. discern and discern. have integrity and you shouldn't have to learn through trauma yeah, yeah like you shouldn't have to go through trauma necessarily to learn about integrity and conscience and care and have good character in my opinion that is something you can choose without those things they're already inside you you know that's what i say all the time i'm right there oh. with you because i'll say <laughs> okay. you know there'll be certain things that become right now everybody's talking about kindness everybody's talking about empathy compassion like these are new things that were just invented in a lab two years ago i'm like when did this ever become fashionable to be empathetic have emotional intelligence compassion i've been like that as soon as i showed up on the scene you know, at birth, I've always been like that. So it's not something yeah, exactly. that, that is uh, I'm, something that I'm doing because it's the in thing. It's in vogue, kindness and empathy. That's the way it should be no matter what. You don't even have to say it. It's the way it just should hopefully be for us to be that way f with one another, right? Yeah. I mean, that's how it absolutely should be. Um, but you know, in so many cases it takes it's not, yeah. no. And sometimes even people go through traumatic situations and don't change. So, you know, True. it's, it's, uh, it's at the end of the day, it's a character thing and hopefully more people can start to live from love and, and have levity. Loverty, that's Loverty. right, Loverty. on the Jim Master Show. They already said <laughs> you're a Loverty, which is so Loverty. cool. You've been designated a Loverty already. That, oh, really? One... I can't see anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's one of the great things, too, uh, Xenia. Oh, is, I can um, see it now. Art Sorry. and music. Um, you combine with lots of positivity and inspiration. So your material has that positive bent to it, right? That's very important. Yeah, yes, positivity, but in, a, in an authentic way, because I do stress very consistently that um, that there is a lot of fake positivity. And 
I call it fake positivity, where basically it's suppression with a veil of, oh, I'm so positive. I'm happy all the time. La la la. Just be happy, be happy, be happy. And that I'm, I don't support. And I've seen that because I've, I, my um, father used to teach or speak in front of big public events and was a, you know, um, a public speaker. So I met all of the top, 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 you know, top, top speakers um, and motivational speakers. And I've seen everything behind the scenes and who they truly are. And so for me, by seeing that and seeing that a lot of these people, and I won't name names, are not were what they not pre present. No. no. And so then I've I seen learned that too with some of them. Yeah. Right. Right. And it's so I sell the, the book, sell the course, sell the workshop. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so from what I noticed is that a lot of these people would be saying, be positive, be positive, but I, there's two very distinct types of positivity. Then I noticed there's authentic positivity where you are owning what you're going through. You're, you know, you've experienced something, you are aware, you have awareness of who you are and you are not suppressing. Whereas the other side is suppression. You're living in this mask and you think you're healed. But what I have learned, at least in my perspective, is that healing is nonstop. There ongoing, is right? an ongoing, you're healing not just for you, you're healing for your, your grandparents, your life, all the things that have happened and everything and genetics <laughs> and, you know, a bacteria might, you know, give you a pimple and you have to heal that. There's always something, some healing is constantly happening. And when people say, oh, I'm healed or, you know, join my course because I'm healed. I'm like, oh, uh, uh, there it's a. It's a continuous the thing. thing. Right. There's yeah, a continuous thing. And right. that's why for me, you know, positivity, it's it's a, a little bit deeper than that, that it's authentic positivity versus suppression or fake positivity, which we see a lot of. We see a lot of fake positivity. We do. Oh, all yeah. The all time. Of, like I was saying, it's like the big thing now. It's like in vogue, it's fashionable and all of that. Um, you uh, you advocate for those who are less fortunate, those who are shoved aside those who are not the spotlight isn't on them and i think that's a beautiful thing you know i've always my sister's the same way we've always rooted and we get that from our parents we've always rooted for the underdog uh mm -hmm. not the braggadocious loud mouth hey look at me look at the car i drive I'm better than yeah. you well, that's Bye. la in a nutshell there's the door lock it <laughs> see you later uh, yeah. now let's have a good conversation with everybody. Uh, it, it's more rooting for the person that's sitting in the corner at the party, not knowing how mm -hmm. to engage and get involved. And we'll go over to them and have a conversation, uh, with warmth and, and empathy and, um, make them feel good and, and lift them up. Not like, Hey, come on, you get on the dance floor and start. No, no, no. They might not know how to do that or, or maybe very fearful of doing that. So don't grab their hand and drag them onto the dance floor. That's not, they're going to resist and, and run away. There's ways to approach people that don't force them to do things just for that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, some people don't get that. Some, some people, and when some people see that the other person is not necessarily, you know, a conversationalist or what have you. They'll target that person, bully that person even more. That's a whole other thing, the bullying. Oh, goodness gracious. I've I've been through it. I mean, that sounds a lot like uh like the industry can be. <laughs> the industry has that that side. And uh and I've definitely seen it a uh, hundred times before. And that definitely deterred me to the industry in a lot of ways. I was ways. just about to say, did that ever sour you or you wanted yeah. to get away from it all? Yeah, I used to put on these events when I first went to LA. I did um, these huge A-listers of events and I was doing hospitality and managing the events. And one of the one of the guys, he was pretty, he's still pretty well known, but one of the guys he would have <laughs> he would have me go up to different people and get their information. And I thought that was, you know, just to network. But he did that because he wanted to, you know, take these ladies, 
you know, up, home. Eat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be like, can you buy me? <laughs> can you buy me an Uber and this and this? And you it just got did really a little weird. animated voice there. There's a little <laughs> bit like a. <laughs> well, it's character development. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, I did go to Second City. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> do you do a lot of animated voices at all? That kind of work because that is great. Uh, I really want to get more into that. Um, that was and my favorite thing was characters. To be honest, I can pretty much do anything you can desire and i honestly love it and anything really just, i can do an just old lady landed or anything, in london but, yeah. <laughs> yes, or an old lady or anything you know but yes so i yeah so anyway so that situation happened and then i said i can't work for you anymore i don't good. feel like this is good you got this out is, of there and he was doing things with underage situations and i was like this is not i can't i didn't know and then i found out and i was like okay no <laughs> this is not for me so then he's like, oh, I'm going to blacklist you. I'm going to put you, I'm going to make sure you never work in this town again. It was such a, you know, a movie situation. Like they're like, oh, you'll never work in this town again. It was mm -hmm. that same Just thing. Just the way, right. Yeah. And I the was way like, you would oh. think, right. Yeah. So that put a, definitely put a damper and things like that had happened. I'd have like, and right now there's a lot going on about Hollywood and all these individuals that did, you know, not very nice things Spotlight to is put, on it them my, yeah. put it lightly. And I, oh, I have stories like that. Absolutely. But you didn't want to say anything because why? Because these people could make or break you. And you also didn't even understand what was going on. I would just leave the situation. But these other situations, these were young people that could not leave those situations. But in my case, you know, I, I'd leave the situation, but I've had uh, all of those kind of things have definitely occurred for me as well. And I empathize greatly. I mean, I was definitely, you know, early 20s at the time, but, you know, it it was shocking. These very like that, yeah. big names that were just Prominent, like you know if yeah. you don't do this with me Some names you've heard in the news yes. yeah if you don't do this with me you're out of here you're forever done. your yeah. your name is now a blank you know slate <laughs> So and some of them are blank slates right now. Yeah. Right. Goes exactly. around, comes around eventually. Yeah, exactly. I really hope so. I mean, there's a, so many more that unfortunately have not been We're still doing whatever. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it definitely deterred me. I will not, you know, like I was, and now I can finally see the comments. I wasn't able to see the comments before. I didn't realize yeah, they were yeah. right there. Our so lovely thank you commenting for throughout. all the comments. Yeah. Now I see it. Oh, so cute. Um, Yes, healing can be a battle that can go on for a lifetime. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, Shobe says, mm -mm, it is, yeah, exactly. It is. Really, really <laughs> it's true. true. And I had to kind of numb out and not even just that, but put boundaries, very solid boundaries um, for, uh, <laughs> thank you. I had to put solid boundaries massively after realizing how things were. And, and that has been very helpful. And that has made me stronger. I'll say that <laughs> to put those boundaries up and know that I need to put boundaries. Does any of it um, come into your music? Any of these experiences weave into the music itself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. My recent songs that are coming out are very, very, very much under that. <laughs> oh, thanks, Chris. Now I'm seeing all this. Um, I, yeah, absolutely. My recent song, um, well, one of the songs I really like that's coming out is uh, is based on the two sides of these types of people where they give you this, you know, this image of themselves that's like, oh, this charming, you know, wonderful in all sorts of ways, not just relationships, but in so many environments where you know, these really great presenters and whatever, and then you see their other side. And you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> it None of that was, what is this? And then they flip yeah, wh back and Which forth. one is real and which one's fake, right? Exactly. Right. So, yeah. um, but I, the lyrics are, um, they say there's two sides of the story, but the only story were your two sides, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, which is, that's the main chorus. And it's playing off of that thing where that's what it seems like. It's like two different individuals and you don't know who's who or who you're even going to come across and, and it's not just relationships it's 
through life. the you know yeah. life. I mean, I've been Business in the corporate world. I've done relationships and yeah. yeah, and I've done. I mean, I've been in the corporate world and graphic design and tech world and technology. I've seen all sorts of different worlds, uh, you know, and the yoga world, which is super. It's really not the integrity is uh, very low. <laughs> um, uh, Which may and, surprise people, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is something I eventually would love to talk about in general because these things that you think are spreading so much positivity are it's all for doing, the buck. It's all for the buck. You know it. You know what's up. I, oh, know I'm, it. I'm I always glad. say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm very, yeah. We learned early. Our father taught us who we worked in business when these mm -hmm. were they're retired now, my parents. But uh yeah, we were or we were taught early on about what's real, what's not real and root for the underdog and, you know, um, togetherness and all those things. And, and I do have this sixth sense to be able to spot nonsense. We will say the word nonsense, nonsense. Uh, in advance <laughs> of other people. And it's actually helped others, friends and colleagues. When I say, you know, the vibe I'm getting from that person, mm, you may just want to tread lightly and mm. not sell your soul <laughs> and it always not want to turns yourself. out right. Yeah. It always turns out that right. That intuition, I tell you. It's an intuition. It's I'm an a intuition. Libra, balance yeah. and harmony. Okay, okay. So, you know, we yeah. have this intuitive way to oh, I attract so we many can Libras. spot BS <laughs> well before the person doing it even knows that they're doing it. <laughs> That's a superpower. <laughs> That's what that is. Yeah, intuition. That's what my mom would always teach me. It's intuition is so important because without that you get taken for a ride <laughs> all the time especially in it, i don't even think just entertainment ish it's honestly all industries i mean how many times do we get scammed by like who knows what um so it's a it's a yeah. non-stop thing but mm -hmm. i i like that you have this mindset because i didn't just <laughs> I didn't dive too much and look too much into you before. So I was hoping to just get to know you this way, Free -flowing, um, yeah. you know, and, <laughs> and then of course I was planning to do a little bit more research before. And then of course, you know, the pipe exploded, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I definitely, I need you to just be on my shoulder everywhere I go. So if you could just do that, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have the left like, one right or the right there. one. Uh, this one's okay. That I was don't there. Move okay. this side that much. That'd be great. I, I might be able to shrink moment. myself. You <laughs> if know, you don't mind. Put little wings on and fly to I, Seattle. Or... That would be good. <laughs> just make a clone. <laughs> just make a clone. Just make a clone nowadays. You know. I like that idea. <laughs> Because that's so important. I mean, it really ugh, is, isn't it? I tell you to be able to discern. Ugh, and then sometimes you can't tell. Like, you're like, oh, you should have seen the red flags. Like, some of these people are flagless. I mean, not until it's too late. You know, it's not it's not always right in your face. Wow, this person's, you know, a bad person. Of being but, so overly nice no. and complimentary and everything else. And yeah, and you can even tell sometimes when people are overly nice, which just that's definitely like, yeah. Hi, hi. I'm like <laughs> that's, that's yeah. not I run away way. from that. <laughs> that's not real. That's nonsense. <laughs> no. You know, that's no, no, no. Just I run away from that. But there are some people, there are some people that are very good. They're very good actors. Uh, just being I mean, yeah. That's pretty much it. They're just really good actors. I mean, if we're giving, you know, Oscars to good actors, these people are, they deserve them as well. They're this the same type of thing, you know, and sometimes they don't show themselves until it's too late. So that's something as well. Even as a survivor, that's something I, I really realized massively that uh, you don't get the full picture. <laughs> Well, I even say like on the highway when people are going 100 miles an hour and driving crazy, I'll say, you know what? If you're going to speed and drive crazy, all right, just don't take us with you. Yeah, exactly. Like you're going to you crash and flip over. Don't you know, go out. What, I can't mm -hmm. stop you. However, yeah. don't take us with you. With exactly. Your <laughs> right. And, and everything, not just driving, everything. Like if you're going to be that kind of person, I'll be over there. <laughs> I'll be off the exit quickly. <laughs> exactly. That's. Did you want to um, true sing a little something a cappella for us for our lovely oh, viewers who are asking golly. and something? I uh, <laughs> well, I'm even just looking through all the comments. It's so sweet. Yeah. Um, Everybody's saying hello and but, pushing um, you well. I and... don't. I don't know. What would I sing? 
just trying to hydrate. Anything that you've read. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing how when a plumbing situation happens, you crave water. I'm seeing this plumber. Thing. We lost so much water today. I'm trying to get more. You feel like uh, you lost it. Um, <laughs> anything where it, it's one of your songs, an original or anything you might want to share a little bit of so they can hear oh. that fabulous voice with that pink Molly. microphone. I know. <laughs> She's Soul's usually Jenna. not in the scene, but I, I was trying you. to hide. Does she have a name? Person walking by. Pinky? Uh, sure. We can go by. That's fine. I think Pinky. I had like a little stuffed toy named Pinky at one point. So that, that, that goes into <laughs> that goes into. Yeah, it's, it was really hard to find this. <laughs> Most of them are gray or black. Um, but yes, and um, you're right. The mature. Yes. I, that's also the thing. Just side note. It's gro it's healing, but also growing. You're constantly, constantly growing. And so if you're constantly growing, then you're constantly healing. It goes hand in hand. Anyway. Um, Song wise, uh, I would have brought my ukulele, but it's in the car. Gosh, what do I do? <laughs> um, a cappella. Um, gosh, what could I sing? Um, impromptu. Well, I mean, <laughs> she's getting ready. She's sipping the water. <laughs> I'm just like, she, I'm so She's tossing dry. the hair back. Oh, I don't know what I could possibly say. What could sing. I possibly uh. say? Hallelujah. <laughs> um, well, what do I have on me at the moment? I do have my piano right here. Just play a song for you on the piano. What do I <laughs> say? What do I say? Oh, what I just I? happen to have I the piano over have, here. I happen to have the entire, my that's whole perfect. band is, you know, Oh, in that's the back. cool. <laughs> I don't even know if I have this here at the moment, but oh my goodness, this plumber thing is going to be the bane of my existence. Um, well, <laughs> I don't have anything at the moment that I can think of, but I mean, we could just like all sing. Could wing it. The, the, um, um, <laughs> what was that song? Mm, well, well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, we are all in work problems. We just have to trust the journey. I love the, I love this topic. It's just so sweet that I don't even want to sing. Um, but uh, that song, well, Bridge Over Tribal Water, we could, I wish we could sing together. That'd be so much more fun. Why can't we everybody, harmonize? Yeah, everybody, well, no, right? you and I too. Do like, you know I would words? harmonize. I don't with know you. all the words to that one. Um, I would have to open it. Don't do you do you like that song? That's Bridge a good one. Over. Is there anything that you wrote that is something they haven't heard? I mean, I could something do from that. the upcoming album or yeah, I mean, I could. It's they're gonna be a bunch of singles. So I'm I did a poll and I asked people um if they would have preferred an album or a bunch of singles, and that was the consensus that they wanted a bunch of uh singles so it's changed that way isn't do. it yeah it's the singles now right used to be the big albums with the cover yeah. art and yeah and that's what i did i did singles. my first my first album was like that but you know what's fun about singles is you can just release one every week and it can just be this consistent you know releasing um there is a song that i've been working on with uh that's a little bit more of a singing song, but um, <clears throat> it sounds great. I'm, yeah, she's clearing her throat. <laughs> <laughs> it's a process, folks. <laughs> so it's she a process. tickled the ivory. She sipped the water. She threw the hair back. She's clearing the throat. <laughs> yes, I, something's I know. Coming. <laughs> yeah, I would. The problem with the this particular piano is if I do it live and it's not plugged in, it has this click thing. So I, I'm gonna not use her because of that um and it just basically sounds like a bunch of clicks and you don't actually hear the music but um this was a song well, it is that, all about the clicks these days the clicks it? <laughs> <laughs> it is it's all about those clicks <laughs> um there this i can see a little bit from this song um last time which is going to be more of a ballad and that's going to be released very differently yeah. than uh Tease the audience a little bit so they'll run out and get the music. <laughs> I know if I can out. do. I before this, I was literally on my hands and knees cleaning up so much water. I was like, 
<laughs> she, she actually, I'm I just like... saw the, actually the, uh, the email that you sent. Oh Jim, yeah. Our, our toilet exploded. I'm dealing with the aftermath. <laughs> yeah. 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 Five minutes so, before we go live, the toilet decides to go. That boom. Was even, I thought it was the toilet, but it wasn't, it was actually a pipe. So when I t messaged you, I thought it was a toilet. I was like, Oh, the toilet leak. A pipe oh. had exploded downstairs uh, uh, and it was good connected. Thing you got so that I was quick. like, Oh my God. <laughs> that could be a anyway. disaster. <clears throat> but it definitely took the wind out of my sails <laughs> that way. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, this was something we, I wrote recently because I've, I don't know why, but a lot of my friends have been breaking up recently. Like half of my friends have broken up after years of being together. And it's I don't know right? why that's happening. It's, yeah. it's like all at once. And the so thing, maybe people are reassessing their lives. I, people I have wonder. done that with their jobs too, you know, yeah, jobs and moving on. Yeah. Making some big moves. And so I wrote this little ditty for um, just that whole thing of, not knowing when something is going to be the last time because in these situations you just you don't know when it's going to be the last time that you uh that you are Take with someone or with are you yeah, yeah. so i think it's it, a perfect choice for these times yeah it's a it's a it's a crazy time i'm still i'm still uh running through it but um the it just basically goes here we are debating love. Oh, why can't we agree? If all I want is me for you and you want you for me. Never thought it'd be the last time. Remember nights we'd pass time. Oh, we'll never be together and we'll never know forever. Never thought it'd be the last time. Remember nights we'd pass time. Oh, we'll never be together and we'll never know forever. That's a little tease. That is really beautiful. That is <laughs> really, a, really nice. That will song. be with, as part of the album? I think this will be a single because it's very, it's a little bit more ballady. It's but, great. Um, yeah. And your, and your voice is fantastic. I mean, our tr the true breath. test, true, right? <laughs> the, the true tests, they always say of a really good, <laughs> <laughs> You've earned that sip. <laughs> that's that true. The true test of it all is when a vocalist, a singer can sing without any accompaniment to sing <laughs> a cappella, you know, because a lot of times, you know, voices are drowned out by the instrumentation, auto tune, it's whatever. True, yeah. Can. So to be able to do it in a free flowing <clears throat> way like that, that was a, that's beautiful, really. Can't wait to hear the whole thing you know yeah it's a really nice i do like i love writing gosh but i but i don't do acapella very often that was so great. that was fun you but uh, also didn't want to be too loud because i wasn't not sure about you the wanna... mic you know <laughs> right know I, do. I do have that sometimes where that vibration happens and then you're yeah. like oh no <laughs> it's, it's just amazing how how those plumbers are so quiet and they must really be there <laughs> thank you maureen thank you so much my dear um <laughs> yes um yeah the plumbers are amazing <laughs> they're they're being quite quiet they're i heard them quiet. a little bit but i don't yeah. know if even they're here still a little clang clang um I know. what else do you have coming up that you're excited about that you got the album and the singles what else is coming up that you might want to share my friend uh, other than the cleaners coming in and cleaning all the floors i am excited honestly um I'm, thank you. I'm a pretty, well, I want to get more into the industry again now that the pandemic is not as, I mean, it's still there and it exists and whatnot, but now I want to start creating more, getting to know people like you, to like work with people like you that have heart and soul and, you know, people like Chris that have heart and soul and create a, create a community in the industry that's, nice good kind people um and f find ways for us to help each other instead mm -hmm. of this like dog eats dog type of like oh it's a man for himself i'm like well right i mean yeah if you're that kind of person every man for himself but i would like to i would right, like who to wants be... to hang with those people they're boring 
<laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I would, you know, people like you and Chris and um, getting more into the industry and creating almost a new industry with those that want to do that, which I know a lot of people are trying to do um, uh, and, uh, and be part of that, be part of that new industry that's, that is budding and starting the industry. There's of an undercurrent of energy, isn't there? Mm-hmm. And I, I want to be part of that. I want to be however I can be part of that to create stuff that's authentic and and real and not not fake, like uh, integrity and real and uh, just the reason we're here. I mean, the feeling you get when you're in a, you know, in a forest or looking at the ocean or things that make us real human beings, not mm -hmm. not. Uh, Plastic not anything else. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I've seen the plastic. I've seen. I've seen so much. Everybody seen so much gem. The Kardashians all the time and all that. Oh, gem. <laughs> yeah. The things I've seen, no, and I'm sure things you've seen. <laughs> it's. It's. I just. I would like to real. be part of, yeah. of something real. That exactly. is my whole my whole heart, and I can tell by your show. And as much as I know about you, you're all about that. Which is, I mean, we have to connect because this is beautiful. I'm, I tell you, I'm much more together when there isn't uh, an explosion, but, you know, <laughs> otherwise. You're doing well, considering, you know, you're doing well. <laughs> <laughs> but Very me, calm, cool, collected. Uh, well, well, they haven't <laughs> they haven't given you the bill yet, so. I know. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that might be I, a whole other emotion. <laughs> I am officially done. I, can't, I cannot. Two hundred dollars. I didn't even hear one bang. <laughs> I know. I didn't. I have proof. I didn't hear, I didn't hear any bang. But but to answer your question, it's really just to grow more with music, to grow more, and um, you know have have even people that um, I work with, or even fans, or or whoever follows me, be on that same wavelength. I don't just want fans or followers i want people who really people. want to be part of that same absolutely, mission absolutely. you know absolutely. yes no it isn't we've become a society that's just about the likes and the clicks yeah. and the follows yeah. and all these different things and that's ramped up okay we have that that's part of the you know the vernacular now but it shouldn't be at the expense of real communication real get-togethers you know, real experiences that aren't always so strategized and algorithm based and always, you know, somebody, they say the average person takes 250 photos of themselves before they like one, before they post it on Instagram. They take with the phone 250. Wow. That's no, a lot. No, I no, thought I was no, taking no, a lot. No, 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 no. 250 times before <laughs> they finally post the one. And by the time they do that, it doesn't even look like them. It's yeah, completely, well, yeah. It, it didn't even look like them when they were 12. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, these did well, AI and all this is getting really AI, good. Yeah. And I remember I, I'm in also technology, right? So I, so I dabbled in all of this. I used to even edit uh, photos for um, for people that were well known influencers and people like that. And the things they'd ask me to do, I'd be like, oh, really? <laughs> we, we really want to do that? Okay, all right. Um, and, you know, and I get it, like a pimple, even I will, you know, I well, will take a pimple away. That, uh, it, it can right. change. If it's something that isn't a permanence, then fine. I, right. I can agree with that. And if it's on the tip that. of your nose, but if it's literally, as well. if it's the shape of your exact face and things like that. I, I, uh, but you know, a pimple comes and go. I mean, my condition includes things of that nature and I, I can understand, you know, but when it comes to things that you, you know, can't, won't go away, you know, so like your nose, and, you know, <laughs> like your nose. and I have to accept, <laughs> you know, color. the nose things. Yeah. I color. Gosh. I mean, yeah, I know. I was, <laughs> as I was saying, my grandmother had green eyes. So I just had to accept I have brown. That's just how it is. <laughs> they say brown eyes are, they're stronger. They're, they I just, like them. Yeah. Yeah. I got them. Those That's are the it. ones. They're in my bio. I'm proud of the brown eyes. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yes. What are What's... some of those blessings and joys in your life that keep you going through everything that you've shared with us on this episode? And we're going to keep the porch light on for you, as I always say, and welcome you back. You have a new yeah. home here at the Gym Master Show oh. with all of the loveties. You're always welcome back here. What are some of the things that you tap into? You mentioned comedy, you mentioned music, but some of the blessings in your life that keep you going through it all. 
Oh, um, there, well, there's so many things I love to do, uh, but all of it just points right back to art and um, creating some sort of authentically positive impact of some sort. So whatever that ends up being, that would would be it. So recently I'm going to, or in a week or so, I'm going to be doing a, uh, going to an event that I was invited to, to talk on one of the conditions that, that we have and bring awareness to these things and not feel like we have to be quiet when we're going through things. Even, you know, and Chris Corman also with learning disabilities and things that he talks about, things of that nature and bringing more awareness to these things so that we don't have to, you know, labor, label ourselves to where we use it as an excuse, but to where we acknowledge the things that we're going through and use them as reasons to grow and reasons to, um, to share. So I always say the, that there's a difference between an excuse and a reason. And um, that that's my biggest realization is that we have to use what we go through as a is not an excuse to be worse, but a reason to be better. So that's perfectly said. Yeah. I couldn't say it better myself. That is absolutely perfectly said and a beautiful way to uh to leave everybody. This was really fantastic. And you know that we chatted for almost an hour and a half. Oh my gosh. <laughs> everybody says that they, 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 they get so into it. They don't even, so uh, you know, I try to make it comfortable and I tell everybody, I don't, you know, uh, I know it's probably sound like a broken record, but we don't really call these interviews. I call them conversations, yeah. free flowing conversations, because I think that people that are watching live or will be watching this archived later, they feel more invested and they they take a deeper dive in when they feel that we're having not a scripted, claustrophobic, perfect uh, interview, question, answer, question, answer, tell yeah. us about the book and you're gone, but a real conversation that is connecting, goes in many different directions and uh, with a lot of humor and fun and excitement, but yeah. sort of connects everybody and brings them together. And, and uh, you did that, you knocked it out of the park. Yeah, yeah. Love so, it, Xenia. <laughs> I love, I love it, Ian. Actually, when I was a kid, my last name is so long, and you'll probably not find it anywhere on purpose. Um, and I always used to go by Xenia Love. <laughs> so See? right, <laughs> exactly. But Xenia now because oh, it's a beautiful yeah. name. Absolutely, <laughs> Thank yeah. You, but yeah. So I mean. I'm really grateful to be here and thank you. And I actually, I almost wanted to ask you a question. I'm like, so where are you from? So tell me more about, more about I you. Know. I know I've been having <laughs> like some, of these, chat. some of these guests. We'll definitely stay in touch. We will. Oh, absolutely. And you know. uh, I wish I had the TV shoot in Seattle now, oh, but a couple of weeks, I'm actually headed to South Dakota. That's I've never been there for specific. my television work. Yeah. Television work. And uh, mm. it's going to be fantastic. I've never been to South Dakota. What are you doing there? And then I, I just learned I'm heading back up to Canada too, which is going to oh. be cool. Yeah. We're doing a documentary series um, in South Dakota. So it's going to be, it's oh. going to be really, really nice. And it's like two weeks from now. I can't believe it. That's so going to be my fun. work in television, my work in radio. It, it's interesting because this show, you know, was formed out of my professional work in TV and radio. But mm -hmm. I, I uh, as I was mentioning to off air, I am involved in a lot of different shows, projects on different stations and networks on television and the radio. So if I have this hat on for that show and this hat on for that production, and the, I've always, it's always been that way straight out of college. I've always done multiple things, juggling a lot of things all yeah. at the same time. And then sometimes I'll say, I'm doing too much. I'm juggling too much. But then you end up, you still do it. It still drives mm -hmm. you. And you still end it drives up you. It keeps doing. you going though. It's yeah. kind of a, it's a good thing. Cause then you don't. With the New York energy. Pause. It, yes, that's true. Which I mean, the New York energy is very authentic. East Coast kid. Yeah. <laughs> it's very authentic. I'm on yeah. the other side <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> where I'm things are different. Fact. Um, a little different. Yeah, different. East Coast kid here. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I love that. Well, my you know my grandmother, she was uh, she was in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah. that's where they came. They were you know, Italian immigrants. <laughs> it was a Boston area. Boston. Yep. Yeah. Boston. Boston. 
Yeah. Boston. Yeah. The Red yeah. Sox. Yeah. Cape she was, she was, she Everything was a real is wicked one. good. <laughs> wicked <laughs> good. I mean, <laughs> so are the people. I mean, it's yeah. a, it's an act. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's also part of why she's, she was so real too. There's a lot of realness there. Yes. Yeah. You, you don't hide. You don't, you don't hide. You don't hide. I love right. that. Yeah. What do you mean you don't like my clam chowder? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? My chowder? Not my chowder. My chowder. <laughs> This was amazing. We want to show people the yeah. website so they can uh, keep abreast of all the cool things that Xenia is doing. And also we've been talking about uh, heartfulworld.org, yeah, which I think is really foundation. a beautiful thing you guys are doing. And we also have a yoga meditation and lifestyle online now because the pandemic oh, awesome. put us there. Um, and that's alive and shine center.com. And that's, oh, that's also great. where we have um, my parents both teach there online. We do classes and have a membership and things like that. And that's aliveandshine.com. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to so, say to the folks stuff. watching, that's fantastic. If you enjoyed this episode, everybody, give us a like. There's a thumbs up icon on the YouTube channel on this episode and all the episodes. Give it a thumbs up like. Share this episode. Share the YouTube episode link on your social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV, and interact with us. Leave a comment for us on the channel. We love when you guys do that. It really does take a village, right, Xenia? Oh, it does. And we're yeah. all in this together. We're in this together. This was awesome. Mm -hmm. High five. High five. <laughs> Very nice. So now you're going to be going and checking on the, you know, the house is abnormally quiet, isn't it? That is. I'm like a little suspicious. <laughs> Is like, everything they, solved? I, I don't you know, know what it is. Maybe they're maybe they all have their cell phones and they're watching the Gym Master show and you on it. They're like, See? wait, we'll hold. Just, wait. just put a tourniquet on that pipe and stop the leak. Just put and then a cork. We'll just cork deal with it. That and, well, after his show is wrapped and he says, "See you later." We'll get back to it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> guys. That's it. So funny. You're the best, my friend. Yeah, uh, I really so want to learn more by. about you. Absolutely, and and, uh, and we thank our dear friend, of course. Uh, Chris Corman, uh, who we love and is one of the yep. nicest guys on the planet. He's Truly. real. He's authentic. He's funny. Mm -hmm. And we love him. And uh, he's just one of the good guys. And I can't wait to, you know, get out to Vegas and see him where he is yeah. uh, positioned. And Jane Thank saying you. some wonderful things as well. And, and everybody. Well, we love all these great comments. And uh, this is nice. Maureen in Arizona. No. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Kathleen, so in beautiful. York, Kathleen in New York City. Some of our real diehards here uh, commenting. That. You're Aww. the best. You be well. Good luck with the yeah. plumbing uh, issues. I'm sure <laughs> types, it'll all, types. you know, it'll be a smooth flow in a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> <There's rivers laughs> Hopefully. Flowing. And yeah. uh, I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I absolutely oh, have you. Absolutely. It's so lovely to get to know you and I hope to continue. Let's do that. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah. I uh, I really would appreciate that. You be well. Keep up the incredible work, spreading the positivity through your music and your art and everything else you do. And come back and see us again on the Gym Master Show. I'd keep, love to. We'll yeah. The light on for you. Okay, my I friend. Love it. Thank you. Have a beautiful rest of your day. <laughs> you too. From the East Coast to you and the West Coast. Thanks for being with us, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Cheers. You're welcome. Xenia here on the Gym Masters show. Wow. Really cool. She's on all the social media, of course, as well. And uh, music with meaning, inspire to aspire. That's a beautiful way to put it. And that's exactly what she does. And uh, speaking engagements and all kinds of cool things. She's really a, a gifted, talented person. But she's also somebody with a big heart. She wears her heart on her sleeve. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And as she mentioned, you know, you also have to uh, take care of the heart on the sleeve because if you don't, you can be taken advantage of. And she realizes that. She shares her story in such an open and authentic way. Really, really beautiful and uh, inside and out. And yeah, all started there. <laughs> as a little kid with the big brown eyes, uh, curious, wide-eyed, and ready to take on the world, which I think is such a cool thing. We thank you for being with us as well. And again, if you love what we're doing here at the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series, wow, 
That is a mouthful. JMS, here at JMS. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share it all, share the loving. Tell your friends about us, what we're doing here, and um, come see us again. We love having you here. It's always a pleasure to have you here on the Gym Master Show. And um, we're going to work hard. We've done hundreds of episodes, and we have a good time with every single one. And you never know what happens on our shows. You can interact with us. And uh, don't forget, you can also uh, comment uh, on the actual episodes, even when they're not live, right underneath uh, in the comments section. We appreciate that. And super chat, super emoji, super stickers when the show is live in the chat helps us, uh, supports us. And also, uh, there's a little super thanks heart icon on the YouTube channel. Click that to help support all this work, these hours of uh, great entertainment and conversations for all of you. And thanks to those of you who do that, uh, the support you've sent our way to help us here grow and continue to um, create these incredible episodes for all of you. We thank our friend Xenia joining us here on the Gym Master Show Live. And we thank all of you. This was a double lovey day. We had two shows today. If you didn't see earlier, we had Marie Carlin, who is with Celtic Woman, dear friend from Celtic Woman. They're on tour with their 20th anniversary tour. Uh, that was earlier. We did an afternoon broadcast for those watching live. So it's like a double two for day here on JMS. Thanks for being with us. Take a couple more uh, comments here, a couple more comments. Did I say more? <laughs> Great show. Thank you, Jim. Kathleen in New York and again in Arizona, Maureen. Have a wonderful rest of your evening as well. Tight, lovely hugs. You too. All right, gang, be well. Take care of one another. Love one another. And don't forget to take care of yourself and love yourself as well. And spread that lovity around the world. We love having you here. Jim Masters, thank you for your time this time. Till next time, we'll keep the light on for you. Come see us again. I'll be right here waiting for you on what it says right there, The Jim Masters Show. We love you all. Take care and be well. And cheers. <laughs>